Welcome back to another episode of the Worthy Bitch Podcast. Today we are going to talk about Vata Dosha. But before we do, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Autumn. I am the creatrix of the Worthy Bitch Podcast. I'm so happy that you are here today learning all things Ayurveda and self-worth. All right, let's dive into it. The Vata Dosha. So I'm going to do a little mini series over the next like week or so over... Um, the three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha, and just break them down individually so that way you can kind of get little bite-sized um, snippets of each dosha in case you're still kind of confused and my long dosha basics hour-long episode might not be something that you can um, dedicate time to right now, so these might be a little bit easier to take in. Okay, starting with the vata dosha. So vata is seen in the environment as the element of space and air. So a lot of times in Western, in the Western world, we hear vata described as mainly air, and then so we only talk about one element for each dosha. But I I think that it's important to have a deeper understanding that there is that second element that goes along with each dosha. So for vata, it It is air with space. So that lets you see. So air alone is has certain qualities, but space has its own qualities as well. And it plays a huge role. And it's really important to understand yourself um, through this through this lens to be able to see space within yourself, not just air, because they show up differently inside the body and in the mind. So it's important to understand that. So Vata Dosha is space and air. The Vata times of the day are from 2 to 6 a.m. and p.m. So that's the dawn and the dusk time. So this is when the veil between heaven and earth is a lot thinner. Downloads from source come through a lot clearer. It's a really creative, auspicious time. A lot of people use this time for Bible study and things of that nature, connecting to source, doing meditations, yoga, whatever your practice is. And if you don't have one, make sure you get one. A lot of vatas don't care to have a practice, and we'll speak on that a little bit, but It's really, really important to have some sort of morning practice. When you wake up, you know exactly what you're going to do to get your day started off the right way. So we see vata in the seasons as well. So the season that we see vata in is the autumn season, the fall time, the seasonal transition between summer to winter. So things are cooling off. Things are kind of drying down a little bit. Summer is a very moist, hot time. So we'll talk about that that's a pitta season. But vata is autumn. It's fall time. It's when the leaves are really dry, cracking, the wind is blowing. Um, Sometimes there's a lot of rain in the fall time, but it is still considered a dry season. Whereas You wouldn't consider summer or winter really dry seasons, and even spring isn't necessarily a vata time. Even though it is a seasonal transition, it is a very moist time. So we really only see vata during the... um, during the fall season, but your vata your vata can go out of balance any time the seasons change. So it doesn't matter if we're just going into fall time or if we're only in fall time. Any time the season goes from summer to spring or from spring to or from spring to summer and then from summer to fall and then from fall to winter and then from winter to spring every time it changes the vata is seen and it can cause imbalance within yourself so what are the vata characteristics how do they show up in a person so if you were to just look at someone walking down the street or you were to look at somebody that you know one of your friends or your family members how would you be able to tell what their dosha is What are the characteristics that make up a vata dosha? One, vata dosha has a smaller build, so they're going to have a a thinner, more petite body. They're usually either very tall or very short. They have thinner bones that tend to be more cracking because of the air and space elements. Um, They have a difficult time gaining muscle. They have a difficult time gaining weight in general. If they do gain weight, then it tends to appear in the abdominal region around their stomach. Um, They tend to bloat easily because of the air in the body. They have 
a thinner, pointier nose, the pointier features. You can see their, their bone structure. They have a lot more prominent bone structure. I don't just mean defined and like sharp. I mean like very prominent. Like you can see the structure of their face very clearly. They don't have a lot of padding in their face because um, they are, they just are devoid of a lot of moisture because it's air and space. There's not a lot of moisture. There's not a lot of grounding. There's not a lot of things to hold on to stuff. So you, they're, their skin is thinner and there's not as much padding because they are on the thinner side as well. And so you can see their bones, their eyes tend to be more sunken in. They have smaller, beadier eyes that tend to dart around when they're talking. They tend to talk very quickly. They usually have darker features, darker hair, uh, dark, darker eyes. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now, then you can see looking at me while I'm explaining this that I actually have a a lot. My primary dosha is a vata dosha. Um, yeah, I, I, I look just like a perfect example of a vata dosha. And if you know me in person, then you know I'm very short. I'm five foot two. I'm a smaller person. Um, I have darker features. Vatas tan easily in the sun. They tend to have thinner lips depending on their secondary dosha. If you're watching this, you can see I don't necessarily have very thin lips, but the do vata dosha does tend to have thinner lips that might even look like they don't have any lips at all. Um, and if they get, oh, so their skin is going to be a lot drier. It's usually going to drink moisture. And if they get spots on their skin, it's going to appear as dark or brown spots. Um, and their hair tends to be on the drier, frizzier side. Just think air is dry, so the vata body is going to appear more dry and it's going to need more, more moisture. So in Ayurveda, speaking so much, I need more moisture. I'm going to drink some water. Okay, so in Ayurveda, there is this term called the gunas and I did a whole episode about the gunas and what why they're important and how they show up and I broke them down really extensively so if you want to go back and listen to that it will help you understand the doshas on a deeper level and why they're so important but guna is just another term it's the ayurveda is the sanskrit term for quality so we have to understand the qualities of each dosha so that we understand when we see them in our body, how to fix it. So a quality is something like dry, uh, rough, cool, cold. Those are all qualities. So it's it's another, like it's an adjective term. Um, so when we have something that's too dry and we want to fix it, we need to add something that, of a different quality, say something that's oily or something that's moist to that thing that's too dry in order to balance it out. So that's why it's so important for us to understand these qualities, these gunas, and how to recognize them in ourselves so that we can learn how to balance ourselves out. Okay, so the vata gunas, the vata qualities are dry. <clears throat> Makes sense because of the air. Light, cool, rough, subtle, astringent. Astringent is one of the six tastes, and I'll go into that in a little bit. Mobile and clear. So if you think about the, the qualities, if you think about the elements air and space, then these qualities describe the elements of air and space Ooh. very, very well. That's my dog, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. She's sleeping at my feet. So air and space, you can see, are very dry. Air is very dry. It's very light. It's very mobile. Um, space and air are both very clear. It's a subtle quality to it. You know, it's not air and, and space doesn't just like, you're not aware of it constantly. It's a subtleness. Um, and it's cool. You know, a lot of times it's very cool. So what does a vata dosha need? Vata dosha needs warming calming, grounding, building qualities to balance out those dry, light, cool, rough, mobile qualities. So we need to build the grounding, calming, warming things. 
Grounding is very, very important for Vata. All of these are very important for Vata. Vata has a really hard time building because it is air and space. And so building anything for a Vata is very hard. There's not a lot of foundation to build on. So that's what Vata really has to focus on is creating a foundation, grounding the body, grounding the mind down so that that building can take place. Okay, so what does a... I'm going to go into how to recognize a balanced vata and then how to recognize an imbalanced vata and then some practices that we can use as far as diet and exercise and just lifestyle choices of how to go back into balance. So a balanced vata mind tends towards um, a lack of structure so they have a lot of spontaneity but they are not overwhelmed by the fact that they they're not just super super flighty airhead out of it completely you know that would be an imbalanced mind so they are they do have a little bit more of a lack of structure they have a little bit more freedom they they don't like to be put in boxes um, but when it's in balance, it shows up in a really creative way. It doesn't show up in a really chaotic way. Whereas if it were imbalanced, it would show up as pure chaos. They have a really great imagination. They are super, super creative. They are referred to as the imagination station of the doshas. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that calls them that. Um, they're really spontaneous. They are super resilient. They can ba bounce back from anything really quickly because there's not anything holding on to the negativity. They can just let it go. They are masters at letting things go. Sometimes it's a little too easy for them to let things go. They're really adaptable. They're really flexible. Um, they have a very quick mind. A lot of times they want to finish saying what you're saying before you even know what you're going to say. Uh, if you can pay attention to my speech, I have a really quick speech usually. And sometimes I forget what I'm saying in the middle of why, what I'm saying it, and that is an imbalanced quality in the mind as well. But it can come from also talking so quickly and being so passionate about what you're saying that it kind of just like, whoop, you just go off on a tangent and then you're like, wait, where was I going with that? But I really have to work on grounding in my in my own mind. If I If I go apart from my practices for even a few days, then I really, really notice. They are emotionally connected, but they are not ruled by their emotions so they're in touch with them but they're not ruled by them whereas an imbalanced vata would be ruled by their emotions they wouldn't be able to understand them they would literally be controlled by them and it would drive them insane and it would contribute to their chaos in their life an imbalanced vata mind so when a vata mind is out of balance it shows up as anxiety it shows up as panic so that is from living in the future when you live in the future, when you are so focused on tomorrow, you get a lot of anxiety in your body. Your body's giving you that energy you need to complete those tasks that you're thinking so hard on that you are literally there in your head. Your body's trying to catch up to it. It's giving you that energy, but you're not physically there, so you can't implement that energy onto said thing. And so it shows up as anxiety in your body because the, the energy's trapped inside. So pay attention. If you're a vata dosha, something that helps me a lot, pay attention when you are feeling a lot of anxious energy in your body, do something physical. Do yoga. That's what helps me the best. If you're not a yoga person, go on a walk. Um, you know, lift some weights. Do whatever, do whatever you need to do to move your body that makes you feel good and move that energy through your body. So instead of letting the anxiety rule you, this is something I did for a really long time in my life. I let the anxiety rule me and it hurt. And I was constantly being controlled by this energy inside my body that I didn't understand why it was there but really it was just there to fuel me it was giving me the energy I needed to complete the tasks for my day so I was upset with the energy because I would feel the energy before I started taking action and then it would make me not take action because I was like oh my gosh I'm anxious and so then I would fall backwards into the anxiety and just hang out there all day long instead of using that energy that my body was giving me to take action on my life to get things done and to actually do the things to turn it into excitement hell I mean I'm so excited I have the energy to do all the things that I want to do today that I get to do today how amazing is that that anxious energy goes away like that try that I challenge you to try that next time you're anxious Turn that energy into anxiety or turn it into excitement and then take action on something and you will be astounded of how much better you feel. 
So an imbalanced Vata mind not only shows up as anxiety and panic, you also see it as fear, fear, insecurity, ungroundedness poor memory, <laughs> airheadedness. So uh, Vatas already kind of have a poor memory as it is. They have a lot easier time remembering short-term things than long-term things, but they, when a Vata mind is really out of balance, like you probably know people that forget what you say to them while you say it to them. One, they're probably not paying attention to you because they can't focus on anything. And two, they just have a really bad memory. Their vata is way out of balance in their mind. There's nothing to hold what you're saying in there. So it just literally goes goes out if it even makes its way in. Okay, so we, we talked about how to recognize a balanced vata body or how to see a vata body so now i want to explain to you what it feels like or what it, what it looks like when your vata goes out of balance in your body and the ailments that can show up for you so if your vata is out of balance in your body it can show up as shakiness bloating gas poor circulation so you're going to get really cold um, your extremities, especially, are really, really cold. Vatas get the chills really easily. They have a hard time holding on to body temperature. They have a hard time holding on to anything, really. Um, so their, their blood just doesn't hold the heat and circulate it through. And when there's not anything to hold, there's no liquid, there's no, like, moisture there's nothing to hold on to the blood it's just kind of like it's moving so slow because it's cold um, it shows up as headaches and migraines and I also see this one as improper thought patterns in the mind so letting the mind be ruled by the air of just flying around all of these improper thoughts that make you feel terrible it hurts your head so sometimes pay attention if you are a vata or if you anybody really but especially vatas if you start getting a headache Notice what you're thinking about and notice if it's contributing and then notice if you change your thought process if the headache starts to disappear. I promise you this is a life saver. Like this has changed my life. I have noticed so many times that my head hurts because of what I'm thinking about and it's literally my body's way of telling me, hey, stop thinking about this. It's not good for you. Um, also, an imbalanced vata body shows up as hormonal issues. So in women, this can show up as amenorrhea, the loss of your cycle. So if you don't have a period, that's not normal. If you have a very sporadic period, that's not normal either, and it doesn't have to stay that way. And even if you have had it like that your whole life and you're like, oh, this is just my normal um, no, not really. That causes issues for you later on in your life. So the less amount that you have your period regular, so you're supposed to have your period every single month very regularly. You know, each person's is different. It, it lasts for a different amount of days. You know, it is different. It's a different flow, but you have, you're supposed to have one every single month. If you don't, you're going to have like bone issues when you get older and things like that. Trust me, I have had this there was years that I didn't have a cycle and I still am working on getting mine back completely to balance after having PCOS and surgery and all of those things due to a severely imbalanced vata and pitta dosha in my body which is what drove me headfirst into Ayurveda trying to heal myself but if you are not having your period it is so crucial to Focus on your vata, focus on your grounding, focus on feeling safe in your body, safe in your life, safe in your environment, loving yourself, allowing yourself, because that's your body's way of shutting down, saying like, oh my gosh, it's not safe here, I can't reproduce, I have to turn everything off. And then also what's going to happen is you're going to start going into premenopause and growing hair where you don't want to, all kinds of crazy things are going to start happening if you can't get your hormones in check as a female. So please work on that. Hormones as men, if there's men listening to this podcast as well, um, hormonal issues are severely underestimated in men as well. Your testosterone levels play a huge role in your moods and everything. A lot of people who... <laughs> everyone thinks is just an asshole really just has an issue with their testosterone is out of balance and so they need to get that in check so just be aware some things are not just you're not just damned to have those things for the rest of your life like it's okay to question things and try and figure out how to fix it if it's something that's paining you in your life or those around you um, and then the last way that you can see an imbalanced 
Vata body is really severely dry hair, skin, and nails. So Vata bodies already drink moisture as it is. When you put oil on your skin, which you should be doing as a Vata every single day, especially before you shower, after you shower, applying um, a sesame, almond, some sort of oil to your skin. If you wouldn't eat it, don't put it on your skin. If you wouldn't eat the oil, do not put it on your skin. I'm going to say that a third time. If you would not cook with the oil that you're going to put on your skin, don't put it on your skin, okay? That's rule number one. Vata skin drinks the oil, hair drinks the oil. So if you're noticing your hair just won't hold, hold moisture and you have split ends like crazy and it just breaks and stuff, that is a vata imbalance. You need to apply oils to that hair, that skin, healthy fats. You need to be eating more healthy fats. Vatas are really scared they're going to gain weight for some reason, even though they don't gain weight very easily. Because when they do gain weight, it goes straight to their stomach. And also they have a problem with bloating, which makes them feel like they're bigger than they are. But just know that healthy fats such as avocados and nuts and stuff of that nature are really, really great for a vata to make sure you bring that moisture back into your body, that, that healthy fat to hold on to that moisture because you, healthy fats are really good for you. Again, if you would not cook with the oil, if you would not eat the oil, put it on your salad, whatever, do not put it on your skin. Do not be lathering the largest organ of your body with something toxic that you wouldn't want to ingest. If that's the only thing that you hear out of this entire episode, I will be happy. <laughs> okay, so there is six tastes in Ayurveda, and they are broken down as sweet, sour, salty, pungent, astringent, and bitter. And so we all know what sweet is. It's that tip of your tongue flavor when you eat something sweet like a candy or something you know it gives you those tinglys sour on the sides towards the back of your mouth you know that pucker feeling that's a sour feeling a lemon or a lime um and, and an, an example of a sweet would be a date or uh, yeah some sort of candy i don't know what you eat but i prefer to eat like dates and fruits and stuff are very sweet sour would be um like a lemon or a lime salty um, obviously like salt, you know, you taste that on the sides of your tongue in the middle as well. Um, so like salty nuts, um, let's see what else, just a lot of things are salty. Celery is also salty. All right. So pungent, what is pungent? If you're not familiar with these tastes, pungent are these, these words to describe these tastes. Pungent is like garlic, onion, mustard, and hot spices. So that is, just remember that pungent, garlic, onions, mustard, hot spices. Astringent is raw veggies, celery, and the green banana. So, you know, when you bite into something like a celery or if you can think of biting into an underripe banana and it gives that like really dryness in your mouth, that's an astringent. So if you go, if you think back to the qualities of the vata dosha that I mentioned at the beginning, um, astringent means like drying. And bitter so bitter is like leafy greens, Brussels, asparagus, you know, most of us are usually familiar with bitter in the form of medicine. Okay, so what are the good tastes for a vata dosha? What is going to pacify a vata? So if a vata is very dry, light, mobile, clear, all of those things, what's going to balance that out, ground it back down, make it feel better so that way it doesn't get out of balance and have all those nasty bloating headaches, those things that we've seen that can happen if the vata is out of balance. Vata dosha needs sweet flavors. Sweet flavors are very grounding. Um, so sour flavors and salty flavors. So sweet, sour, and salty. Uh, sweet potatoes are great for vatas. They're very grounding. Think root veggies. Root veggies literally grow in the ground. Um, so they're very grounding. So think about that. Apples and stuff like that, they hang on the tree. They literally grow in the air. So they're going to have a very airy quality. So that's going to increase vata dosha. Like increases like. So if it's something is airy, so say a bag of chips, and you are noticing it's really cracky and there's a lot of air in the package before you consume it, then that is, um, that is, has a lot of vata dosha in it. Aggravating tastes, the tastes that are going to push the vata dosha out of balance even further are pungent, astringent, and bitter. So garlic, onions, hot mustard, hot spices, um, 
astringent, which is, you know, the green bananas, celery, those things of that nature, raw veggies, and bitter like Brussels asparagus and stuff like that. It's actually really good. I'm going back over that because I've realized that a lot of my diet actually consists of the um, astringent and bitter flavors as well as the sweet and sour. It's all about it's all about balance, but if you're noticing that your vata is out of balance, then just pay attention to the qualities of the foods that you're consuming. So again, I just wanted to remind you, vata needs warming, calming, grounding, and building qualities to balance out. Really quick, I know this episode's getting a little longer than I kind of intended for it to. Just a few practices for balancing the vata dosha that you can implement for yourself today. One, grounding, sitting or lying down on the ground, eating grounded, grounding foods, root vegetables, earthing, walking barefoot on the earth, um, abhyanga. Abhyanga is a self-oil massage, and so like I mentioned, oiling your body, and there is a very specific way to do the self-oil massage. I might do a little tiny episode on that, um, but you start with your right side on your right foot, work your way, and you end with your left side. Um, and also a pack practice that I love to do, especially in the wintertime as a vata dosha, is to pour oil in my belly button. Um, sesame oil is great for vata. It has a warming quality. Um, and almond oil is also a warming quality as well. It's not as warming as sesame, though. And sesame is also have is a very thick viscosity, which is really great for balancing vata. But if your other dosha is pitta, then sesame might not be as good. Um, but pouring oil on the belly button, laying down, and then just letting it chill there for as long as you can, you should notice an, a very quick initial um, grounded feeling wash over you. So this is something that's great if you have insomnia, if you have a hard time falling asleep at night. But be careful, you could fall asleep with the oil in your belly button, which I have done so many times, and then you wake up with oil all over your bed. Um, I don't mind that, but some people might. But pour the oil in your belly button, let it sit there as long as you want, and then rub it all over your stomach in a um, clockwise fashion because your digestion goes in a clockwise way in your body. Meditating on your root, sh root chakra, your right to be here, your right to exist, breath work, guiding your breath, slowing it down in the nose, out the nose, a very warming breath. Um, asana, different types of yoga practice, restorative yoga, a lot of laying on the ground, um, grounding practices where you're literally laying on the ground, sitting on the ground. Bhakti yoga is a very devotional yoga, so you are doing the yoga for a reason. You're creating an intention before you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, your practice, whatever. You want to keep your drishti, your eye gaze, downward as a vata. It's important to keep when you're doing your practice, especially yoga or something of that nature, to keep the eyes looking downward towards the ground is grounding for the vata. And um, seating, seated or lying down poses, slow, deliberate, present practice. Try not to be like planning what you're going to do next or reevaluating what happened over here and writing out your grocery list. Don't try to, don't be doing all that. Really try to be in the moment. No multitasking for a vata. It's terrible. It's terrible. They want to multitask. Vatas love to do a million things at once and get nothing done. And it's awful. Um, and last one, sip warm lemon water throughout the day. This one's great for all the doshas. It keeps your digestive fire up. It keeps everything flowing really well. It keeps your body ready to digest the food that you're going to get it. And then you're going to digest it better, absorb the nutrients better, and everything is better with that. Okay, that's all I have for Vata Dosha. Um, uh, stay tuned for Pitta and Kappa. And I love you guys. And I will catch you on the flip. Home Skillet Biscuits. <laughs>